Okay, we're live right now, Ian. And my first question to you, we're dealing with a problem here. Let's look at the first problem you missed. What'd you miss there? Um, I was just that, um, so when I um, was dividing 28, negative 28 by 4, I forgot to uh, transfer the negative sign from the 28 into the negative sign. Is that something you feel like you're pretty strong with then? Or that was a, yeah. is this something that happens every once in a while or a lot? Every once in a while. So not a big one that we need to worry about, you're thinking? No. Okay. Let's skip on to another one. So which one are we dealing with here? So, okay, um, this one looked yeah. like, I think you were the one who even said, hey, how do we even set this up, right? Yeah. So this whole problem says a rectangle has a length of of x plus 2 and a width of 7. So if I had a rectangle here, and I draw a rectangle, and a length of what? 7. A, length of se a width of 7, so I'm going to make the shorter one 7, and the length is x plus 2, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. So my next step here, if the area of the rectangle is greater than what? Uh, the perimeter. Yeah, so if area, area is greater than perimeter, So if this is greater than that, if area greater than perimeter, what's the next part say? Um, what are the possible areas for the rectangle? Um, so what is the possible? So it's saying, hey, let's take this information and plug it in down here. Let's change color. Let's take all of this and we're going to plug it in down here, okay? And then it says at the very end, solve for the area. So we want to find out what the area is going to be at the very end. Okay. So what do you know about area so far? Um, the area is... Um, area equals what? As a, a formula. Area equals 7 times... Oh, not 7 times height. Tell me formulas. Um, um, oh, uh, length times width. Length times width, base times height, yeah. Either one. I'm going to write... Uh, sorry. Length times width. Okay, and what about perimeter? Um, the perimeter is the length, two, two times the length plus uh, two times the width. Yep, sure. So it's the sum of all sides. Can you read that stuff? Mm -hmm. Perfect. So it's the sum of all sides. So now we know how to set this up. You told me the area is length times width here. So I'm going to write, hey, 7 times x plus 2. All right, is that... Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely correct. And that's going to be greater than the perimeter, the sum of all sides. Well, you told me there are two sevens. I'm going to multiply two times seven. You also told me there are two x plus twos, two sides length x plus two, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I know I'm going to add, because it's sum, sum's a Q word for addition, sum of two times x plus two, because I have two sides, length x plus 2. But from this point, what property we're going to use? The distributive property. I'm going to say, hey, let's distribute. And I'm going to distribute. I'm going to change my color here. you mind if I do that? Yeah. Cool. So I got 7x plus 14 is greater than 14 plus 2x plus 4. Okay, the next thing I want to do is combine all my like terms. So on this side of the equation, I only have 1, 7x, and I only have one constant, uh, plus 14. But on this side of the equation, I have a positive 14 and a positive 4. I'm going to change my, my x color here. Um, when combining like terms, I just want to make sure that these are color coded, so now now I know which ones are which. So here's my my x's. Okay? okay. So now I know what what values I'm going to combine here. Going back to red. Let me scroll down the page somewhere. So let's solve for this. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is let's subtract two x from this side and subtract it over here. So subtract two x. Well, it's going to cancel out. Now I'm left with 5x plus 14 is greater than 14 plus 4.
All right. Uh, let's uh, let's add these two together real quick. 14 plus 4 is 18. 18, 14. 5x. What's the next step I want to do here, dude? Um, subtract 14 from both sides. Let's subtract 14 from both sides. Now I have 5x is greater than 4. Now the last step here, all i got to do is divide both sides by 5. Because I want to isolate the variable. Divide by 5. So x is greater than 4 over 5. Am I done? Uh, no, not yet. Um, all I've done right now, I've just found out that x is greater than 4.5. So all I've really done is been able to plug, I can substitute 4 over 5 right here into x. Okay. So now what I really have to do is go back to this whole area section and say, okay, let's plug or substitute 4.5 back into x right here. Okay. So area is 7x plus 2. Or 7 times x. And again, this equals my area. So now I'm going to substitute this in. Well, 7 and 4 fifths plus 2. Well, 2 written as a fraction, bud. I can do this all in my head without a calculator. This written as a fraction. So 7 and 4 fifths plus over 1. Alright? Can I add these fractions? What do they need to have so um, I can add them? They need to have a common denominator. Perfect. Common denominator. So let's do this. The, the easiest way to do it is just, hey, this, has a, this is a, has a common multiple. I can turn this into 5 real easy. So multiply this side by 5. I have 7 times 4 over 5 plus, and I'm going to create some brackets here, 2 over 1 times 5 over 5. In the brackets, in my parentheses, now my last part here. You hanging with me? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, my last part, I'm going to say 7 times 4 over 5 plus 2 times 5 is 10 over 1 times 5 is 5. Now I can add inside the parentheses. But parentheses, I have 7 times 14 over 5. And now all I have to do to multiply fractions, what do you do when you multiply fractions? Um, I'm going to turn 7 into 7 over 1. You multiply the numerator times the numerator and uh, the denominator times the denominator. Yeah. 7 times 14? Uh, 8. Find it out real quick. I don't remember off the top of my head. 7 times 4 is 28, right? Yeah. We'll say 14. 7 times 14. Real easy way to do this. Say 10, 4. Let's add these together. I'm going to plug 7 into both of these, okay? Okay. 7 times 10 is? Uh, so Real easy, 70. Plus 7 times 4, 28, right? Mm -hmm. So 28 plus 70? 98. 98. So this has got to be 98 over 5. Okay. This equals... And that would be... How many times does 5 go into 98? Well, how many times does it go into 100? Uh, 20. 20, so we know it's got to be 19. Mm -hmm. So 19 and 3 fifths. And 3 over 5. There we go. Okay. Another way to solve this is you could have just found out right from this point, 
if you didn't want to do the fraction form, it's found out what this is as a decimal. Okay, so you have one to do. Got it. Okay, we're going to stop this one.